Hi, I'm Dr. Charlie Galanis, board certified plastic surgeon in Beverly Hills, California. Today we're gonna to talk vasor liposuction with a patient who actually went through the procedure itself. We're gonna have a candid, unscripted conversation describing her decision to go through with it, what her recovery was like, and a discussion of her results. Hey guys, I'm here today with Annie. Annie's a recent patient of mine who underwent vasor liposuction. She's gonna share with us her experience. Annie, I'm really grateful you're here with us today. Absolutely, happy to be here. So Annie, tell me how you made your decision to undergo this procedure. And it was just, I was working so hard to lose weight and I was trying so hard for like over a year and yeah. I just could not, I mean, you people around me were noticing differences yeah. in just like my shape and things like that, but I wasn't. Yeah, right. And it was kind of the first time in my mind that clicked where it was like, obviously what I'm doing is not getting me to the point that I want to be at. Yeah. And it wasn't ever, because I had put in the work, like I had made huge lifestyle changes. And so for me, it was like, oh, okay, if this can help me kind of get over that hump, yeah, I, let's do it. Right. Like the decision from that point was very easy. Some of the things you said touched a nerve for me that, that I hear a lot. And that's, um, it, there's just a way that we see ourselves, which mm -hmm. may be different than how everyone else sees us. Yeah. Other people may be seeing changes that we're not feeling ourselves, or that we just, when we look in the mirror, we're not, we don't have that same picture of ourselves. Right. Um, the idea of there are, of, of maxing out what you can do with conventional methods. And the reality of it is some of us are just genet genetically sort of predisposed to holding fat in certain areas or bodies are made in certain areas that we can only get so far with, mm -hmm. you know, a great workout regimen or the reality is a lot of us are working and we can only do so much with a you know a full-time job or right. people have you know kids at home or whatever the reason so that that's another thing that i kind of picked up from what you're saying and you know just just the idea of the confidence the wanting to mm. feel better about yeah. myself not it's not even like you weren't even, you know, I don't even think you said it's that you wanted to look better. It was almost like a feel better kind of thing. 100%. It never, because no one ever said to me, you look bad. Right. No, you know yeah. what I mean? It was never like, it didn't come from anything about how I looked. Yeah. But I also just knew, like I can pinpoint for me, like when I started to gain weight. Yeah. And I'm on the road a lot for my job, things like that. And so for me, like I know when that was. And I had know what I, how I felt before that. Right. Right. You know, I wanted to wear certain clothes. I wanted to do, be able to do certain things. And just as I started gaining weight, like I retracted like into myself of just like, I'm not going to allow myself to do those things anymore and wear those things and that sort of thing. Um, and so for me, it was 100% like just, I want to just get back to that place where right. like, I love how I feel every day. Got it. Take me through kind of what your expectations or hope was or hopes were before going into it. It was probably outfits. I haven't worn like a bikini in <laughs> like 10 years. Yeah. Um, and so I think for me, I was like, oh my God, I'll be able to wear like a two piece swimsuit. Um, a, like the dress that I would need to wear for the weddings that I have coming right. up and things like that. Like it was all thinking about that. Like, okay. Oh my God, the options are just so wide for me now that yeah. I can choose whatever I want. Got it. I want to talk to you for a second about what I try to tell patients now to expect for the results. Mm -hmm. Obviously everyone's going to have a different result, but in terms of the progression of their results, what they're going to see. And then I want you to kind of give me your honest appraisal of how things have gone for you. Okay. So what I tell patients with this is that when they first take their garment off, mm -hmm. so when they're right out of surgery, right out of surgery, maybe a couple of days out, it's going to, it's going to be like, Oh my God. Mm -hmm. It's, you're going to just be like, I am a completely different person. Yeah. Everything's going to look really nice and tight. You're going to come right out of that garment where things have been pushing down and things are going to look great. Mm -hmm. Then what happens uh -huh. is then the swelling kicks in. And in spite of all the things we're doing with lymphatic massage, mm -hmm. ultrasound, the garments, swelling is inevitable. It mm -hmm. just happens. And so then people, then it, then that's where we get into the marathon phase. So that first part is like, wow, instant gratification. Yeah. But then it's like, okay, now we got to wait. Right. And I tell people that is a least a three to six month process mm -hmm. because there's a couple things that are going on. You have swelling that has to go down. That can take eight weeks. Then even beyond that, there's still some residual swelling that's going to resolve. But on top of that, there's tissue tightening, there's tissue remodeling, mm -hmm. there's skin that's because you know, when we during liposuction, we're not removing any skin, it's all still there. It just needs to kind of come down on its own. Right. And that's the long process. And I, I try to stress that to people kind of beforehand because I, you know, just to assuage their concerns a little bit and their fears, because there is that, you know, I do see that 
instant thing and then yeah. a little bit of a bump. And then it's like this <laughs> slow steady climb. And the other thing I tell people is, let's say you're four weeks out. Monday may be an awesome day. And then Wednesday, you're like, what happened? Mm -hmm. And then Friday, you're good again. Yeah. So there's, there's, it's kind of like this. It's sort of like you're going up. That's a general trajectory, but there's still bumps down as you go up. Actually, that's place. very accurate because so... I think I came out of compression for the first time at 48 hours Yeah. to like shower and, and you sent me a picture. Again. I still have yes. that picture. Oh yes, yeah. I do too. Yes, I remember And I this. was like, oh God, <laughs> this is amazing. Right. Everything was flat. Everything was tight. Yeah. I was bruised. Right. But like, aside from that, if bruising was gone, it would have been like... It looked like two different people. It did. I remember that. It totally yeah. did. And then, sure. And it was like that for like a few days. Yeah. But then, the, yeah, then the swelling kicked in. Yeah. And, that's, and it's alarm. It is alarming. Like I, I don't know how many texts through like the recovery and results right. process I sent you, where I'm like, is this normal? Right. Yeah. Like because I and day by it is so different. Yeah. Day by day. And what I tell people to, and you know, we, we've talked about this. Cause people are like, well, what can I do to help it? Outside of what we're doing, we talk about compression. Yeah. Anything that's going to retain water is going to make it worse. Yep. Not permanently, but it will take longer. Yeah. That's part of the reason we sort of try to limit activity a little bit mm -hmm. because activity can make swelling worse. Yeah. And you can share that with me if you want, yeah. what your experience with that was. Sodium, mm -hmm. high sodium diets, you're going to retain fluid. So oh, all yeah. of these are things to kind of, that we have to sort of, you know, mm -hmm. think about or that yeah. can help from the patient side of things. But even still, it's still kind of a process. Yeah. So it sort of take me through the four weeks to three months. So kind of t tell me what that, what that process has been like. I was nervous mm -hmm. because I had taken my compression off and felt like, oh my God, it looks like I didn't even have this done. Right. And that was the first one where I was like, is this normal? Right. And so that, in which you told me it totally was. Right. So we dealt with that. I would say for like the first four weeks, especially it really is a day by day. Like yeah. you're, and you can tell you're still in compression at four. And so like, you can tell through your compression though, right. what's happening. Sure. And at four weeks is when I started working out. And I'm so glad you told me to expect swelling yeah. when I started moving because it, I definitely did. Yeah. And had I not known that, I think I would have really stressed out about it. Right. The, the roughest stuff is behind you. Yeah. We're about, we're almost about three months now. Yeah. So we're still a little bit of ways to go, mm -hmm. but tell me kind of what's different now. What, what do you, how does it feel now? I've been gone through all of this. I mean, you mentioned earlier you would do it again, which is always great to hear, of course. Oh yeah. But, 10 times over. But what, what are some of the differences you notice in terms of how you feel, how you look, what you're wearing, if at all? So Just my clothes are fitting very differently. What I was a little, not nervous. I was excited, but it was like, oh my God, I'm going to have to buy like a whole new wardrobe. Yeah. Luckily, I wasn't thinking about the fact that like my thighs and that wasn't changing. Right. So luckily, like my pants for the most part still fit. But no, and I'm going to have to have like my jeans tailored and things like that. But yeah. I'm wearing what I want to wear. I try. I do wear a lot of leggings just because they offer some sort of compression right. just to help because I'm sitting all day long. It just kind of like pools in that lower area. Yeah. So I try to eliminate that as much as possible. But I feel really good. I'm like so excited. Yeah. I still send you photos. I mean, it, like, I, every time you get, you send me a photo, we're just like, you know, sending superlatives yeah. back and forth <laughs> and all kinds of exclamation points. Liposuction is the kind of procedure that in a way is the gift that keeps on giving. And I mean that mm -hmm. in two ways. One is that the result continues to improve for a period of time long after you think you're at your final result. Yeah. So, you know, people think about oh, three months, I'm kind of there, which people are getting close, but a lot of people really, their final result, you got to follow them even further out than that mm -hmm. because there's still going to be some changes. There's still gonna be some remodeling. The other thing, and I think this is born true with you is it really can jumpstart people from, you know, they were here, mm -hmm. then it gets them to there. And then it launches them into that next phase of sort of their, whatever their workout regimen mm -hmm. or diet regimen. They're just, the people are so happy and in love with kind of their new version that mm -hmm. they want to keep it or get it even better yeah. if they can. Now I want to work out to see what I, where I can get my body right. to and for the mental side of yeah. it. Yeah. And even, yeah, exactly. Like it's more, now it's, it's more, more of just enjoyable. how you feel and if anything, maintenance, yeah. but not necessarily, I have to do this to change. Now it's like, right. I feel better where I'm right now and I want to keep that. The mental side of like, it is the mental health that I have around like yeah. my body and everything now is just so much better. Yeah. Each patient comes into the office with unique goals, of course. In Annie's case, the thing that she was mentioning to me a lot was just not feeling comfortable wearing certain clothes and just really not feeling like her most confident self. To address that, we were going to do vasoliposuction of the abdomen, flanks, waist, and arms. 
So one of the things I'm, I want to sort of mention or talk about uh, briefly is what our standard post-op protocol is. What mm -hmm. people who undergo this procedure, from my perspective, what they have to go through. Yeah, yeah. Let's do that, and yeah. then I'll explain and then, what it is. And then you're going to give your version <laughs> of the same events because okay. I have a feeling they're going to be very different. Yeah. But it's but it's important to hear both yeah. sides. So from my side of things. The day after surgery when people get this, an important part of my post-operative protocol involves lymphatic massage, which mm -hmm. is a special specialty massage to get fluid essentially either, you know, actually get the fluid out of the body mm -hmm. if it's still draining, or basically trying to move that fluid along lymphatic channels so that your body will clear it itself. Right. So that's one thing. Mm -hmm. Ultrasound, which is meant to sort of helps with bruising, helps with inflammation, helps limit the risk of sort of scar tissue forming, which could give people more of an irregular contour. So that's something I have people start the day after surgery, typically. Mm -hmm. And we'll have it any number of days up until a week, just mm -hmm. about every day after surgery. So that's something I'll tell patients. <laughs> I'll tell them you're going to have these procedures done. I'll tell them there's going to be fluid leaking during that time. I'll tell them you need your pain medicine, but usually most people, plus or minus by a week, inside of a week, are probably not taking their pain medicine that much anymore. Mm -hmm. And of course, there's compression garments to wear. So that's the, that is the, that's the party line from the plastic yeah. surgeon about that's what to expect afterward. Right. So if you'd like to translate that to the patient version. <laughs> yes. So kind of take me through that. Yeah. So I did lymphatic drain, uh, massage and ultrasound for three days. Mm -hmm. Um it's not enjoyable necessarily. It's one of those things where you're like, this is awful, but it's necessary. Mm -hmm. And if you go into the, like the, with the mindset of this is helping me, right. you can get through it. Right. Um, the first day she got a ton of fluid out, which mm -hmm. was really great. And then the, as, as it went, like there was less and less, right. which is a good sign. Right. At least that's what you told me. Yes. <laughs> um, and then in terms of pain meds, I actually did get sick with the pain meds mm -hmm. the first night. Yeah. Um, I think that was probably a combination of the anesthesia right. with right. the pain meds, but I, after about three days, I didn't take any more of the pain meds. Yeah. I moved over just to Tylenol. And um, I, th I think that's, that's pretty, that's pretty common. Mm -hmm. I, I would say that falls within the realm of normal for yeah. this procedure. Post-operative protocols, procedures, everything is a fluid situation. You, mm -hmm. you tailor it as time goes on and get more experience with it. And as I've evolved my liposuction techniques, that is something that has changed. And I, you know, in, in terms of what I tell people to expect mm -hmm. in the first few days after. For most surgeries, I'll tell people, if you take a week, you're, you'll have plenty of time. That's what I was going to say. If yeah. I went back and did it all over again, yeah. I would take a full week. Yeah. Just it, because you just got to, like, it's okay to just, like, let your body heal. Right. And some yeah. of this also depends on what a person's job is. Yeah, you know, If true. someone works from home and doesn't have to get in the car and drive around or do a lot of different things, maybe sooner. But right. But that, that's kind of, that's, that's what I figure. Okay. Yeah. The compression garments are intended, if you think about it, as you know, your, your skin's here, the tissue underneath's here. There's this space where the fat used to be. Now that's gone. Mm -hmm. So what we're trying to do is compress the skin to limit the possibility of fluid collecting between it. Mm -hmm. That's the whole point of the compression. Right. There is no, you know, if you, if you go to 10 different plastic surgeons, you might get five or six different recommendations mm -hmm. about what kind of garment, how long. On average, I would say most people will tell you four to six weeks yeah. is, is pro you know, you're in the vicinity of what most people would say in terms of the compression time that you need. Right. And what I'll tell folks is that, you know, you're going to need it for that amount of time. It can be a little bit of a pain. You can wear it under your clothing. <laughs> Why don't so you, now, now go ahead and am, translate that I one have for a me. very strong <laughs> opinion about compression <laughs> garments. Um, I did have my arms done also. Yes. And so... I know we haven't talked about that, but that's where my gripe with the compression garments come in. I under, again, it was one of those things where it was like, I hate this, but I know it's necessary. Right. So I was doing it, but the first, so the first week I had the foam pads right. between my skin yeah, and those were just a hassle to deal with. So I was like, glad to be rid of, I understood again, I understood what they were there for. Yeah. I understood what they were doing. I was ready when those were gone. Right. Um, the compression for my stomach really wasn't that awful. It yeah. was easy to conceal under clothes. It wasn't that uncomfortable. The arm ones, <laughs> I want to, I mean, I haven't burned them, but I want to. <laughs> <laughs> well, what was, the, what about them? Was it that you couldn't conceal them as easily? Was it they were uncomfortable? A combination of both? What was it? It was a combination of all that stuff. Okay. So essentially I was wearing the, those over the stomach. So the stomach one comes like it's cut up like this right. and it has kind of like tank top straps. Yeah. 
and then goes down to your knees. Right. And so that one wasn't that big of a deal. When I would put the arm ones over it, then I was just like, it was cutting into my, like yeah. I could come up with a million reasons I hated it. It was tougher to conceal. And also just so, the fabric for me was like almost irritating. Yeah. Like it irritated my skin. I mean, ultimately you get through it. It's yeah. also like the time and compression flies by. Yeah. Um, so I, I was actually in it for eight weeks. So if I can, re so let's kind of go back and just review this for a second. So a lot of drainage. Tons of drainage. A lot of drainage. Pain medicine for about two or three days. You had mm -hmm. some issues with nausea the first day because of whether it was the pain meds in combination with the anesthesia. There yeah. was some nausea that first night. Um, the compression, you were you were pretty good about it, but it was there were some parts of it you weren't crazy about, but you stuck with it. Oh yeah, I wore it twenty four seven. No, I know you were like, good with yeah, it. You were like, very good I with it. I didn't even want to like take it off to shower. Yeah. <laughs> the ultrasound and lymphatic massage was yeah. uncomfortable, but tolerable. Abs absolutely, that um, was like a little blip on yeah. like the, okay. Um, and then you know the talk to me about the only other thing to cover. I was thinking about related to what you were saying earlier was the activity. Um, so at about three weeks, I did kind of start to get into it, but just like walking on the treadmill, right. I wasn't doing any weight stuff. It was very slow. And then at four weeks, I started going back to spin class. Yeah. But a week out, you were back at work and feeling okay being uh, at work? Less than a week. I was six days okay. out. I went back to work. Okay. It was, t I mean, gr again, I have a job where I'm in my car all the time. I'm right. in and out. I'm in sales. So yeah. like I'm running around like crazy. Right. Again, looking back, I would have taken a full week off and just kind of let myself chill. Yeah. Um, but I was, I was able, I took it easy, but I was able to like do my normal, what I needed to do. You, if you were watching before you had your surgery and you came across this video and you were yeah. like, oh, I'm so glad I heard that. What, if you could think of some of the things that you wish you had heard before from someone in your position, mm -hmm. what would that be? What are the important things that you don't think maybe surgeons convey yeah. as well as they should? Well, I think the, just the, I don't want to call it a mess, but just like the fluid that comes out, right. I was just, was nowhere. You had told me like, yeah. it's going to be messy, but nowhere near what I expected. Right, right. Um, and then something that I didn't touch on was that I wish I would have known. And I think I even told you this. Mm -hmm. I was nowhere near prepared for the mental part of it. Okay. So talk to me about that. And it had nothing to do with pain. It had nothing to do with like, and I know at one point you and I had talked about well, Annie, you went from like working out all the time and having all these endorphins yeah. to not. Right. And so I almost, I don't want to say I felt depressed because depression is obviously like very separate and very serious, right. but I felt just like very down. Right. And that was something that, and I think too, I, I thought I knew that it was going to be a recovery time of just like becoming smaller. Yeah. But even now that I'm smaller, my head is still a little bit where I'm like, there, like there's still like a body dysmorphia aspect it. of it yeah. where like. I'm still getting used to being smaller. And this is educational for me because I yeah. you know we did talk about that. Mm -hmm. And of course it made sense to me that, yeah, you're, you went from being someone who is taking multiple spin classes a week yeah. and doing all this <laughs> stuff to now you're just kind of like low sodium diet and take a walk. Yeah. And that can be hard. And mm -hmm. I, I think that the, for me moving forward when I'm talking to patients is, you know, at least letting them know so they're not surprised by it. Yeah. Me telling them may not make a difference, but I think, right. you know, preparing them for that because I think that's something that people might overlook. So mm -hmm. I think that's a good point. I appreciate yeah. I think just up. being prepared that like, hey, for the first couple weeks, your mental game is, you're just not going to feel like yourself. Right. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. And I think that was the one thing, like I had even, you know, talking to you, talking to my sister, talking to my boyfriend, like that was, I said that multiple times. Yeah. Like I was not prepared for like yeah. the mental part of this whole yeah. thing. Yeah. No. And I think that in... That there's probably some of that with every aesthetic surgery mm -hmm. that someone goes through. Just it's just recovery period. Yeah, recovery is a tough period, and I think that people do focus on the physical aspects of recovery, and that's what and we focus so on. And it's so much more. Than that. This is physically what you're going to feel, and it, but we don't talk about sort of the mental aspect right. of it. And I think that's something we shouldn't so so readily dismiss. Right. But with all that being said, I would still go do it ten right. times over. Like I would do it again in a heartbeat. What I want to kind of talk about, or or what I want people to hear is more about the surgery itself so the lead up to it so we'll kind of mm -hmm. talk about it in segments take me through kind of the it's it's the the week before the days yeah. leading up to surgery to talk to me about kind of where your mind was at with things and and what that was like well really because i think we had scheduled it like a couple months out and from the day we scheduled it i was just like it was i had to get through the holidays and i had to get through a bunch of stuff and i just wanted it to be here yeah like i just i told you that i was like yeah. can we just do it tomorrow yeah yeah, yeah. i do remember this. and so 
um, for me, like the days, the months, days, whatever, leading up to it, I was just ready for it to be here. Right. And so I had to keep reminding myself like, okay, no, this, you're undergoing surgery. And I had yeah. never been put under before. Yeah. Um, so that, I think my headspace too, was just like being prepared for that. Did you find that you were kind of, in terms of how you were health, like lifestyle, how you were living health wise, mm -hmm. did you find that in the knowing that that was coming up? I'm curious, did that make you more, even more disciplined than, yes. did it raise you up a level in terms of, I'm going to go into this thing in the best shape possible? Or did you find yourself being like, I'm getting lipo in a little bit. I can maybe slack. Oh no, I went into it. I'm going to be in the best shape yeah. going in because I also knew I had a little bit of anxiety about not being able to work out for a little while. Right. Like for me, because I'd been so disciplined and like, yeah. so I guess regimented in how often I was exercising. Yeah. That gave me, that was probably the only anxiety I had about. It's actually about an interesting it. point. Yeah. And, and I think that's, you know, I think I'd be the same way. I yeah. think if you're someone who's really used to being active and you're saying, okay, we're going to do something and you're not going to be able to be active for a while. I yeah. would probably, it's almost like you're cramming for a final, like yeah. you're trying to get as much. And, in as you and that's can. exactly what I did. I was taking like three spin classes a week. I was working out yeah. with a trainer. Like I was, yeah, I leading up to it. I was definitely like in. But I have up. to tell you, that's the ideal. That's yeah. what a surgeon wants to hear that. Yeah. They don't want to hear like, I was an In-N-Out burger. Yeah. Because I'm like, <laughs> screw it. I'm getting lipo. It's fine. No, so I, mean, I think that's good. Case. Now, the day of surgery comes. Yes. The morning of. Mm -hmm. we're, you know, I, I remember how you were doing that day, but was it still that excitement that you'd had in the months leading up or were you kind of, was were we shifted now more to the anxiety portion? I think I was still just really excited. Yeah. I don't remember having a, like too much anxiety about it. I remember like I was, the, what I had anxiety about, well you probably remember because you can't eat or drink for a while. I was like, how am I going to get through 12 hours with yeah, no water? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and so that was like the only thing, but I, and maybe you remember it differently, yeah, no, but you, I, I, I just remember being really I excited. I think it was, I think for you it was a continuation of excitement. I yeah. think for, for people that there's, there's a spectrum, right? Yeah. You know, I have some patients who are, they're just overjoyed and smiling right up to the mm -hmm. moment they're asleep. I have others who are, they get that anxiety, which is just as normal. And you know, yeah. they're kind of, oh my gosh, it's here. So, you know, I was kind of curious what your experience was, but that's how I kind of recall yeah, it Yeah. I just was like ready to just have it done. Yeah. Yeah. Not a ton of people know. Right. Which is also the really great thing because you like gradually get smaller. Yeah. So people aren't like, oh, she must've just had lipo. Like yeah. if you don't want people to know, they don't have to know. Yeah. And it has gotten to the point where like, people are commenting like, oh my, you look like you've lost weight, you, whatever. Yeah. And it's just like, again, not the reason behind it, but it's just it's like, a, it's oh nice my validation. God, this is life changing. Yeah. Look, when I get those messages from me, it makes my day. Yeah. Like well, that, good. Because remember, I always thought I was annoying. No, I, I mean, listen, all, you know, as you know, all, all patients get my cell phone afterward, yeah. but, but those getting those messages and, and being able to be included in that process for mm -hmm. you is, it, it really is a crux of the fulfillment in what I do. I mean, it has to be. Right. Um, and so, you know, I'm not only am I grateful for you sharing with everyone else, but but grateful for you letting me be a part of it too yeah. and helping me with that. So, oh my gosh, of course. Thank you so I much. I can't say thank you enough. So. <laughs> Perfect. <Thank> yes. <laughs> I hope that video helped answer some of the questions you might have. If you have any more questions, don't hesitate to write them in the comments section below, over on our Instagram, or head over to my website, and myself or one of my team members will be happy to help you. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. Please consider subscribing for more videos just like it. And until next time, have a great day. And remember, there's beauty in the before and the after.